Hundreds of people stormed the main airport upon hearing a plane was arriving from Tel Aviv, Israel. Authorities had to shut down the airport and we don't yet know if there were any injuries. Look, we can agree that the world is a much angrier place than what it was a couple of weeks ago. Um, but it is to note that with regards to uh, Muslim society, Muslim community, uh, it's obvious that there would be this type of outrage. Besides the Muslim community, anyone with a sense of humanity or anyone who can see the truth will be outraged and the numbers are clearly showing based on the protests uh, going on around the world. You as the individual, you with your Twitter account or X account, you with your Facebook or Instagram or the like, you're the reason Benny Gantz summons TikTok, Facebook and Instagram to tell them to take down content and you're the reason that the European Union, some of the officials who are sympathetic to Israel are trying to push a motion to reimpose restrictions that some of the social media have lifted because they believe that they are losing the narrative war and one of the reasons, and I'll make a very bold claim, as based on my analysis in terms of the politics the reason there hasn't been a ground invasion yet is because the israelis are concerned that the narrative is not yet in their favor that everybody in the world has seen the destruction that damar that they've done and that because of protest in london in chicago in canada in bangladesh in pakistan in rome in berlin in paris it's okay it's okay i don't know if i can no no it's okay what motivated you to come today? I've been looking at Palestine for 36 years since the first intifada, and nothing's changed. It's gotten worse and worse and worse, and it pains me so much. What's uh, one solution that you'd like to see happen? End the occupation. End the apartheid. That's it. One state. What's one message that you'd like to tell the people of Israel? You need to really get self-introspective. This is not cool. Like, own it. It's wrong. Full stop. What's one message that you'd like to tell the people of Palestine? I love you and I will never, ever leave you. Period. I see you guys are enjoying my content, but you are not subscribed. Please consider subscribing and don't forget to like this video. Jazakallah I've often heard it said that Palestinians deserve to die because they voted for Hamas. Never mind the fact that they won the election with only 44% of the vote and without winning a majority in any single district in Gaza 17 years ago. Never mind that now, presently in the year of our Lord, 2023, 47% of Gaza is under the age of 18 and 40% of them are under the age of 14 and did not exist yet when that election happened. Let's take a look at those claims. There was a survey taken in Gaza earlier this year 
hear, but you wouldn't know it from the news. Let's take a look. First question. How much trust do you have in the Hamas government? Oh, would you look at that? If it isn't a bunch of normal people. Wow. Question number two. Which party, if any, do you feel closest to? Oh, would you look at that? Not Hamas. If you stack up these bottom three, it's twice as much as Hamas, let alone the PIJ. Hamas only got 27% of that question. Question number three. How responsive is the Hamas-led government to what people want? Oh, oh my God. If it isn't a bunch of people who aren't fucking stupid. Oh no, my world is shattering because Gotham has feelings. Question number four. What is the most effective way to influence a Hamas-led government decision? Oh no, they're not terrible. How will I live now? And here's one more fact that I hope the media chokes on. When presented with the option, most of them actually voted in favor of a two-state solution. 73% of them actually. But you know the worst part? I have to sit here and beg you to care about them. They don't deserve to die. Who could believe that would be a controversial thought? You know, I'm, I'm very puzzled by the constant uh, concern which the world and the... Uh, and also Britain, I must say, Mark, is showing for the Palestinian people. He's puzzled. Do you hear that puzzled? He's puzzled by our concern. Are we on the same planet? He really thought he ate. I am begging people to think before they say shit like this. Why do I have to beg people to care that they don't have water? To care that they're drinking sewage? To care that the hospitals are out of antibiotics and they're doing surgery with vinegar and no anesthesia? And they're doing it on the goddamn dirty floor because there's no beds left? Do you even know what it's like to die from sepsis? It's this fun little disease where you get to feel every single one of your organs slowly die inside of you over the course of days before you finally pass and the worst part is i just said all of that and so many of you watching this are still not gonna care listen to me very closely i am very scared that we are going to a place that we are not gonna like the walk back from don't tell me we care about all children when a million of them are thirsty and don't tell me we care when a million children who weren't alive 20 years ago are starving for the sake of a terrorist organization that they had nothing to do with the fact that this is a reality that i'm having to convince you matters that they matter. Every single person killed in Gaza had a name. They mattered and they will still matter tomorrow. They're not going anywhere. It's overwhelmingly evident that, of course, the people of Gaza, the people of the West Bank, Palestine in general, is obviously the oppressed. So, I mean, to convince people of this fact is actually, it can get frustrating, I think. And I think some some of them, their hearts are just purely uh, deviant in that way where they just can't or will not submit to seeing the truth. Uh, but as for us who do see the truth, as for the Muslim community and for those who, uh, who are fighting for what is right, I think we should just keep on doing what we're doing, which is to voice our condemnation and objection to this genocide occurring over the Palestinian people. And then as Muslims to remain firm in dua, if you're on social media, why can't you share something in support of Philistine? Why can't you share something, an article, an accurate article? You can share even a statement, even a hashtag, Free Palestine. Don't think that this doesn't make a difference. It makes a huge difference, I'll tell you why. Because these are called social media signals. And these social media signals, there are technologies that will track these signals. They will use an algorithm to see, okay, what is the sentiment regarding this issue? Like if there's a presidential election, or there is some kind of world event. What is the feeling around this issue? And that is used by corporations for marketing. It's used for governments to determine government policy. They're tracking social media signals because if they want to know how people feel, they can't just do a survey and send a census. That's a difficult process. But social media provides a much broader access into the public sentiment. So they're looking at social media signals and that helps them determine policy. So if they see that there is overwhelming overwhelming support for Palestine and there's overwhelming anger. This can have a big effect on the media institutions and how they report. This can have a big effect on the governmental institutions. Are we taking advantage of it? Don't just be silent and don't be scared. What, what could happen? Some people say, oh, well, I don't want to say free Palestine because maybe then someone will start monitoring me. Trust me, they're monitoring everyone. They're already monitoring everyone because they have technologies for this. You cannot be paralyzed by fear. You're not doing anything illegal 
by saying free Palestine. You're not doing anything illegal by sharing an article or sharing an image in support of the Palestinian cause. So what is your excuse? Why can't you do that? That takes half a second and it can have a big impact if we all collectively do that. You have no excuse. Because we are changing the global opinion and I'm telling you from what I've seen in my lifetime and even what the elders are telling us. This is unprecedented. The shift is unprecedented. Human Rights Watch is now calling the Israeli regime an apartheid regime. It never used to. Amnesty is calling Israel an apartheid regime. It never used to. Apartheid is being used on the Congress floor. It never was used on the Congress floor before. These are victories that we should appreciate. These are victories that we should celebrate because they're not victories that have come from top down. They're victories that have come from the Ummah mobilizing and the Ummah saying we will never die, that we are ready to mobilize for the sake of the Ummah. And I will finish and I promise this is the final sentence. What I love more than anything else is what this cause has shown is the Ummah from Malaysia, Australia, all the way to the US, Bikallah. But the point is from Australia all the way to the Americas. I remember I had a comment in the Thinking Muslim podcast and somebody said, we, we are upset that you didn't mention Colombia. Colombia is standing with the Palestinians. They've kicked out the Israeli ambassador. They were telling me, Sammy, don't forget, there are people in Colombia standing with the Palestinians as well. Peter Latin America standing as well. Allah is changing the hearts and they are terrified that the hearts are changing and the reason they're changing is because of our efforts. May Allah reward us for our efforts and may He give us the tabat, may He give us that, 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 that heart, that, that steadfastness, not only to continue doing it, but also to appreciate the power Allah has given us. However small you might think it is, Allahi Azim, to Allah, it is great. And on that note, guys, Jazakallah Khair for tuning in. Please don't forget to like, share, and if it is that you enjoy my content, definitely subscribe. Jazakallah Khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.